Now, this is pretty impressive. You guys give yourself a big old hand. Obviously, welcome to a great, exciting day in University of Louisville football. It's a great day for the city. It's a great, great, great day for the university. Uh, we will open up uh, with remarks from uh, Interim President Dr. Lori Gonzalez. Dr. G uh, Gonzalez will introduce, introduce Director of Athletics, uh, Josh Hurd. <clears throat> After uh, Josh's remarks, uh, Josh will introduce our new football coach, Jeff Brom, who will stay up here and uh, inter I have some opening remarks, then he'll stay up here to answer some questions. And then we'll open up questions for Josh, Dr. Gonzalez, and our new uh, incoming president, uh, Dr. Kim Shatzel, who is here to support the new hire of Jeff Brown. So let's give her a big hand as well. So with that said, I'll bring up Dr. Gonzalez. Good afternoon, Card Nation. Thank you for your patience. We get to celebrate another historic moment in the history of the University of Louisville. Before I begin my remarks, I want to share greetings from our governor, Andy Bashir. He sends his best wishes and he states, today is a great day for the University of Louisville as Jeff Brom is coming home to the Commonwealth. Brittany and I want to personally welcome his family and we know he will not only be a great coach, but also a great member of our Louisville and Kentucky community. So that's from the governor. So I want to thank all the fans for being here, all the people that believe in uh, University of Louisville Athletics. I want to thank the members of our media here today for your continuing interest in the Cardinal Athletics. So we're grateful to see donors and supporters and around the room. You are the foundation for the success of our student athletes. We're so proud of these athletes. They proudly wear the cardinal red and black, and they exemplify what true student athletes represent. As you know, athletics is a critical component for our campus life, and it also helps us live our mission to make a difference. The cardinal legacy continues to shape our ability to create new generations of University of Louisville graduates and fans. Athletics matters at the University of Louisville, and football matters here, too. So just five days ago, Josh Hurd called to tell me that our former football coach was interviewing at another institution. And Josh and I discussed his plan for what comes next. So very quickly, he put things into motion. And to no one's surprise, he executed this plan to perfection. We agreed on the approach. And now we have the ideal candidate. We stand before you today introducing our new head coach, another native son and cardinal. So I'm going to leave it to Josh to share with you the accolades and c career achievements of our coach. But let me just say this. He's not just the coach because he's one of us, that he comes from here. He's our new coach because he's exactly who we need at this moment in Louisville. He shares... He shares our values and our vision of, U of Louisville football. He's a proven winner and a developer of talent and character. He is a true cardinal. And the fact that he didn't need directions to get here, that was a big plus, right? That was a big plus. So I want to close by thanking Josh and his team for their stellar work, for the Board of Trustees, for the University of Louisville Athletic Association for their continued support, as well as President-elect Schatzel, who just by serendipity happened to be here this week when this big thing happened. So we're so glad. And now to formally introduce our new head football coach, please welcome our amazing director of athletics, Josh Hurd.
Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that, uh, that right there means more than you know. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm humbled, to say the least. Uh, I, I'm going to be brief here. Uh, as you can imagine, I haven't had a lot of time to uh, work on these remarks here. I uh, somehow managed to forget my dress socks today. Uh, so we're, uh, we're going to get up here, say a couple words, and then introduce our new football coach. So uh, let me just start by saying decisions like, like this start at the very top. So Dr. Gonzalez, Dr. Schatzel, thank you. Only at the University of Louisville can the athletic director send text messages that, me messages that say, I've talked to both of my presidents. Board of Trustee members and Athletic Association members, thank you. This decision says we're committed to competing at the highest level and our university leadership will invest to ensure our students are surrounded by the very best. As I've had conversations with board members, it's clear there's a commitment to making sure this university thrives academically and athletically. These are not mutually exclusive. We plan to be great in both and together this is the best way to elevate this entire university. A few more brief thank yous before I say a few things about Jeff and his family. My staff, bear with me here, Marvin, Amy, Jeff, Lottie, Michael, Zach, Rocco, Laura, Kelly, Alan, Marissa, Ronnie, Justin, I could go on and on here. Once again, this team effort to pull this off in such a timely manner is incredible. I, I, I truly believe I have one of the best staffs, if not the best staff in college athletics. If one person didn't step up, this didn't get done like it did. So thank you to the entire staff. Our previous football staff, Scott Satterfield, he assembled a staff that left this program better than when, when they arrived. So thank you for all that they did. Our current football staff, a couple of them up here, Dion, he's at practice. <laughs> Josh Thompson, Robin, Denise, Vicki, our strength staff, our trainers, equipment staff, our recruiting staff, and everyone else who came to work Monday morning knowing that their focus was on our student athletes. Through this process, Sean Freibert, Glenn Sugiyama, and countless others that worked tirelessly to provide insight and guidance in order to get this across the finish line. Lastly, our current and our soon-to-be football players, I ask them to be patient with this decision, and they have been. With that, let's turn our attention to our newest head football coach. I've been, I've been the AD, or I've been in the AD role now for 366 days. Jeff, you've made my life harder for 365 of those. <laughs> All kidding aside, this is, this is an exciting day for the University of Louisville in our city. Today we welcome home Coach Jeff Brom to lead our football program. That's not the end. I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to keep going here. <laughs> the Brahms, yes, all of them, are synonymous with Louisville, and we're fortunate to be joined by several members of his family here today. Jennifer, Brady, Brooke, I don't have to tell you this, but the University of Louisville is your home, too. And we're thrilled to welcome you back to Louisville. And Brooke, you made this happen with that birthday wish, so I owe you one. Beyond his ties to Louisville, what excites me most about Jeff is that he's had success at the highest level of college football. We're less than a week removed from him leading this team in the Big Ten Championship, in the Big Ten Championship game, and his teams have answered the call numerous times on the biggest stage against top opponents. This decision had nothing to do with bringing back a hometown hero. Simply put, Jeff gives this program the best chance to succeed. Jeff is a proven winner. 
Bowl victories, conference championships, and top 25 rankings have all been a part of Jeff's success at Purdue in Western Kentucky. Along the way, he's done it with an exciting brand of football that remains innovative and entertaining, and he's done it by making the right decisions with the best interest of his student athletes at the forefront. I said earlier this week that we would work quickly and tirelessly to identify a tremendous leader for our program who understood the history of Louisville football and who would be committed long term to this school and this community. There's not another coach in America who fulfills those requirements like Jeff Brom. It's my pleasure to officially, officially introduce to you the next head football coach at the University of Louisville, Jeff Brom. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, it's without question a humbling experience to, to be up here in front of you guys. It's a tremendous turnout, um, and uh, it always means a lot when you see a lot of familiar faces, which I do here today. Um, so it's really gratifying and really humbling to be up here in front of you. And I take this uh, job very seriously, and I look forward uh, to years to come. But it is um, great to be back here, so thank you for coming. Thank you. I also want to thank uh, you know a few people here with me. Of course, my wife um, Jennifer and, and my daughter Brooke and Brady. They're excited to be here. My immediate family, my mother and father Oscar and Donna, and my brother Greg and my sister Kim is here. My father-in-law Phil, uh, and there are a few other people. You know, my high school coach probably was, is my best mentor uh, that I've had throughout my entire career. He's in our front row right here, Dennis Lampley and his family. I got the opportunity to play in the NFL for around seven plus years and be a lot of, around a lot of great coaches and players. And uh, in my opinion, Dennis Lampley is the best. So I learned a, a great deal from him. Um, so. I want to thank my good friend Sean and his wife too. Uh, they always are great friends to me and I appreciate all their help. I do want to thank the University of Louisville. Um, this is a, a great opportunity for myself and uh, you don't know how much I'm looking forward to getting to work. I want to thank uh, Josh uh, for all his work. I can tell he's a great person, which means a lot to me, and uh, he does a tremendous job. I want to thank the presidents, both of them. I know I'll get a chance to, to know them, and uh, I look forward to working uh, as, as hard as I can for each one of you. Uh, and I want to just want to thank the uh, Louisville administration. There's a lot of familiar faces I've seen just today. Uh, it's great to see them again. Um, and see people that really take pride in, you know, loving working here and, and, and helping this university achieve its goals and have a lot of, having a lot of fun doing it. So it was great to see those people. Before I begin, though, I do want to thank, um, you know, my former employee, uh, Purdue University, our athletic director, Mike Babinski, President Mitch Daniels, our board of trustees, uh, Mike Berghoff, our fans that were there, and our players for a wonderful six years. I'm very proud of what it we all accomplished together. Purdue will always be my home away from home, but this is home. This is not a job to me. This has been a way of life for my family since I was born. While in my career, I have coached at many different places, some near, some far, but I never really left Louisville. My heart was always here. I'm overwhelmed by the welcome back that Louisville fans have given me. And we consider this more than just friends and family and just fans, uh, but just great people that have given back to all of us. From my days watching games at the fairgrounds to playing at, uh, for my mentor, Howard Snellenberger, to serving as an assistant coach, I believe I understand the decade-long mission that this community has had been built upon and maintained a championship program. I know where this program began, the passion that it has driven it, and what is it, what is it overcome and accomplished and where it wants to go. This is the fans team with something to prove. And while the homecoming is special, I know that football is what is most important to you and to all of us. And that will be my top priority for, for myself and our staff and our players. We want to be a team of substance 
with a system and a plan. We will go for the win, and we will not wait for things to happen. Our style will be aggressive and occasionally risk-taking because that is how I learned the game here. We will coach our players to play tougher, harder, and smarter than our opponents while developing them to be the very best they can be, maximizing their potential on the field, in the classroom, in the community, and as young men of character. We want you to be a part of that journey as well because you believed in this program way back when very few others did. And I truly believe that together we can take this program to that next level. I cannot really express uh, what this opportunity means to me and my family, but I feel your support and it will drive us to coach and lead this program for you and get us to fulfill its promise. And I truly am thankful for this opportunity. I think people that know me um, know I like to win. I like to compete. It means something to me. I'm going to bend over backwards to find a way to get it done. I'm going to rally the people around me to do the same thing. And in my opinion, in order to win at a high level, everyone has to do their part. The head coach has to put in the work. He's got to really put in the work. He's got to take the blame when things aren't going well. Our assistant coach has got to put in the work. They've got to know how important it is to these young men to be put in the best position to succeed and do great things. And then our players have got to put in the work. But I think all three elements have to happen. And you can't just have one, you can't just have two. You have to have all three. As my family knows, I enjoy being with my family. I enjoy being around a lot of people. But I don't have a lot of other hobbies. <laughs> I like football. And I also like to win. You know, as, as I've been gone for a while, uh, of course, I watch. I'm a big fan. I'm a sports fan. I enjoy watching all sports. Uh, you know, my daughter's a volleyball player. My, my son, Brady, loves all sports. Uh, but, and I've watched this, this uh, community and this sports team. And I think uh, we've got a great setup here with tremendous facilities. We've got a lot of fans that are eager to see a team that wants to work hard, that wants to put in the work, that wants to compete, that wants to try to play at a high level. Um, we've got uh, a great backing from the administration and for all the people uh, that want to see this program succeed. Uh, and that's what makes it worthwhile. Um, you know, once again, there's just there's so many familiar faces here that it's, it does make it that much more special. Uh, and my wife has been teasing me ever since just I got here, which is just today, that she's not going to see me very much. Um, but I promise you, she'll see me. But I am going to get to work, and uh, I am going to make sure that uh, we do our part. I want our players to, to want to work hard and succeed and achieve their goals, but I want them to have fun as well. And I do think you can work hard and have fun at the same time. And uh, if, you're, if you're doing that, good things are going to happen. So I guess I'll finish with... Uh, you know, just one thing that I normally like to say, and, and that is, let's play football. Some members of the media, just please raise your hand. Somebody will bring you a mic, and you can ask your question. And remember, just members of the media, please. <laughs> In uh, 2018, you said it took a long time to get to a decision. You said it was an emotional decision. Why is this the right time now for you here? And it wasn't then. And can you kind of speak to how fast this did happen this week? And I think you woke up Monday not really knowing anything was going to happen. Gotcha. Well, I think uh, I'm very thankful for all the opportunities I've been given along the way. Uh, had a great uh, experience down in Western Kentucky as the head coach. Really enjoyed my time there. Um, was able to go ahead. I was able to move on to to Purdue, uh, and really met a lot of great people, really hardworking blue collar people that gave me an opportunity to be a head coach um, in the Big Ten and try to resurrect a program. And uh, I was fortunate to play for Howard Schnellenberger, coach with him, and I know that's what his specialty was. 
So that's why I took on that challenge. And uh, even when I took the Purdue job, 90% of my colleagues said, no, don't, don't take that job. But, you know, that intrigued me even more. So as I took that on, I said, you know what, no, I'm going to try to help this program, you know, get over the hump and achieve its goals. So we were able our first year to find a way to go to a bowl game and win it. And then, of course, that's when the Louisville job came about. Um, and as, as a lot of people know, you develop relationships uh, with your team, with the people you work for, with your recruits. Uh, and those things matter. And uh, after one year, you know, um, when the opportunity came about, I'm sure my family wanted me to come home, uh, and rightfully so. Uh, but it just wasn't right. And it wasn't even easy to tell my family that, but it, was, it wasn't right. I didn't feel good about it. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that I continued along the journey and, and kept my word uh, to these young men and the people that had, had hired me. So continue to do that. I feel like uh, along the way other opportunities that came about, and I've, I've tried to do the right thing by all people. And then, of course, you know, six years later, I feel like we've made progress at Purdue. Um, you know, we had a really good season last year. We had a good season this past year. We found a way to get to the Big Ten championship game. Uh, and you don't know how much that meant to our players. It just meant a great deal. And you know how much it meant to our fans. And, uh, and we all did it together. But, man, it was a rewarding experience. Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to lie. I was extremely happy where I was at, very happy. Um, and then basically how it came down, just to be quite honest, I – we, had to, we played our Big Ten Championship game on Saturday. Right away, had to get up and recruit all day Sunday. I was able to get back late Sunday night. I uh, was going to get ready to go out Monday. Took my son to school, dropped him off uh, at school, driving back to, to get ready to get out of town. And my son texts me, Hey, Dad, have you seen Twitter? <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and of course, I'm not very good at my phone. I said, No, I have not. He goes, You might want to look at Twitter. Uh, <laughs> So I did, and, uh, you know, that's, that's how I found out. And, of course, unbeknownst to you guys, I had a press conference scheduled at 10 for our Citrus Bowl game. So right away I'm like, oh, here we go. Um, so really that's how it came about. Yes, it happened fast. Um, I've always been straightforward with our athletic director. Uh, you know, we talked right away. Uh, you know, I told him, you know, I was going to listen, um, and, and he understood, and uh, and he knew that this this might be uh, the, the time. I think, uh, and of course, he didn't want that, and uh, he more than tried to to talk me out of it very nicely, but very kindly. I mean, he he was respectful of the situation, um, and then things happened fast, and then uh, you know this is this this is the time. Um, it's a great opportunity. I've always wanted to coach here. Uh, I love playing here. I love living here. And I do feel like that uh, we've accomplished a lot of goals at Purdue. I can look at myself in the mirror and know that I gave it everything I, I could. Uh, we made progress. We achieved uh, a lot of great things together. And now it's time to take on a new challenge. Yeah. Jeff, Dominique Gates, WLKY in Louisville. You mentioned your family. Now that you are the head coach here, and you just said the time feels right, can you put into words what that moment will be like, you the head coach, and you'll have your family there on the sidelines just uh, supporting you, and you'll have, that, I guess, that full circle moment? Well, it, it's always special. You know, we have a, we have a big family, and uh, there's a lot of people that uh, want to be a part of it and want to experience uh, all the fun that we have doing this. Um, you know, you always want to please everybody. You definitely want to please your family. Uh, like I said before, you know, you, you guys are our family as well. Uh, the Cardinal fans are our family. So we want to try to please those people, and we want everybody to be a part of it. And I think that's what uh, we've always experienced here, living here, is everywhere we go, we, we feel like, whether we're related or not, everyone's family. And uh, we want to treat people that way, and that's kind of what I believe in. Um, I see the good in, in, in all people. Uh, and. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, together we can have fun and go try to achieve some goals and, and win some football games and, and try to win a championship. Uh, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, this is sort of the continuation of Howard Schnellenberger's vision and dream for the program. What did he mean to you? And if he were here today, what do you think he would say? Well, I was lucky to play for such a ter terrific coach, 
Coach Lampley right here in high school. Then I got the opportunity to play for Coach Snellenberger in college. And uh, those two guys molded me into what I became today, not only as a player, but as a person. Uh, you know, there are a lot of great qualities about Coach Snellenberger. You know, once again, he loved the game of football. He loved to compete. He loved to win. He wasn't scared to tell people what was getting ready to happen. I'm a little more hesitant to just outwardly tell it. <laughs> I'll do it behind closed doors, but he was not. But you know what? He had the ability to get his players to believe that they could achieve anything because he was not scared to tell people what was getting ready to happen, and he was willing to work for it. Uh, so I had the opportunity to play for him, had the opportunity to coach with him, and he was a little bit more mellow then. Uh, him and Beverly were great people. They've treated me great. They have continued to stay in contact with me all through my coaching. Uh, obviously, Beverly still does now. I know she was just in town yesterday. We weren't able to get her here today. Uh, but they were just great people that took a lot of pride in this job. Um, when I talked to Coach after year one about this job, he said, come home and take it. That's how much he loves this place um, and how much Beverly loves this place. So I just think they're genuine people that, uh, you know, I appreciate everything I learned from them. Uh, we want to try to carry on that tradition. Uh, he was the one that, you know, made this go in the first place uh, and was willing to step up to the plate uh, and come back to Louisville and try to resurrect the program. So we're thankful for him and his wife and his entire family. Jeff, <clears throat> excuse me, Ken Spencer, WHAS 11. Jeff, when the last time it came around and you had to say no, you mentioned it wasn't the right time, did you worry that it wouldn't come back around? Well, that's always, uh, that always can happen. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like, um, you know, a lot of decisions you make. If, 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 it's, if it's tough and, and you, you, if it's 51% one way and 49 the other, and you choose the other one, you're, you're scared that maybe uh, did I make the right decision. Um, I really felt, I mean, it was, it was something I wrestled with, but really felt that I just couldn't look in the mirror and, uh, and, and say I was doing the right thing uh, by all. Uh, but, yeah, I, I knew it couldn't come about. And, uh, you know, my family loves Louisville just like uh, Josh said. My, my daughter loves Louisville. Um, <clears throat> this past year, not this season, but before, my, my wife uh, and daughter moved back to, to our house in Louisville because her mother uh, was sick. She ended up passing, but really took care of her at our house for six months. My daughter went to school here in town um, while I was coaching football, um, and then they rejoined us in the spring, and um, she liked it here. <laughs> she, she liked it here a lot. And I, and I was told that. Uh, and whenever I was with my wife, I said, you need to calm that talk down with your daughter. You know, we got to make the most of where we're at, have fun doing it. It's a great place. We can't worry about all that. But she sure was right. It, it, came, it came about again. Uh, so I, I'm lucky and I'm fortunate. And uh, without question, I'm going to try to make the most of it. Jeff, Andrew Chernoff with WLKY Sports. How did you grow as a coach during your tenure at Purdue, maybe compared to Western Kentucky, that's going to help in this job? And also, what's the first thing that you're going to tell the current Louisville football players when you talk to them? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, I've been a head coach now, I guess, uh, nine seasons. Uh, and I, I have learned a great deal. Uh, at Western Kentucky, you know, playing at that level, you're able to throw the ball around and put up big numbers and have some fun doing it. And... Um, when you get to the Big Ten, it's a defensive physical league. And while we were able to do that, you know, I learned quickly that you better have some really good defense and you be able, better be able to run the ball occasionally if you need to. Um, <laughs> so, yep. So over the years, to be honest with you, I think I've grown as a head coach because, um, you know, we have found a way to be better on defense. We have found a way to score few more multiple ways and I do understand the importance of of making sure you you check all the boxes and uh, also along the way I've learned that you know when you hire people and you hire staff you have to hire great people first and that's one thing I'll, I'll never make the mistake again I, you have to hire great people first that want to do things the right way for the right reasons and help these young men achieve their goals and then if they know football that's great but we can work together uh, and stick together to get this done if you're willing to, you know, 
suck it up when things aren't going well, get up when you get punched in the gut, uh, and not, you know, wallow in, in misery for a day or two. And I just think uh, the team reacts to how the coaches respond. And if you're willing to, to fight through things and, 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 and find out different ways to, to find a way to win, uh, your players will respond and know that you're trying to, to, to coach uh, as hard as you can in order to get things done. And I do think we have been able to pull off some big upsets that we shouldn't have. And I think it's, 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 it's from the ability to get your players to believe that they're better than they are and the ability to take risks and be aggressive. And, yeah, and sometimes you're going you're gonna to swing and miss, but you have to be aggressive in your approach. Uh, and when it comes to you know, our football team, you know what? Every team has, has great players. They have great people. It's up to the coach to get the most out of them. I'm definitely going to you know, uh, let them know that I, I'm here for them. Uh, we're going to work hard. We're going to have fun. We're going to uh, you know, try to achieve our goals of being the very best we can be. And I'm going to try to help, help them do that. And other than that, I want them to you know, finish off the season strong, enjoy their bowl game, and, and come back with a win. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Hey, Jeff. Michael McCam, a Cardinal Authority. Welcome to town, or welcome back to town. You. Um, you mentioned getting straight to work. You've obviously got early signing days right around the corner. Uh, the program has a number of highly rated kids already committed. What's your, I guess, your plan of action to, to talk with them and to get the, the program to a point where when you're happy on National Signing Day? Well, that, that process has already started, and, uh, yes, it's going to be an exhausting uh, process here for the for the remainder of the time until signing day because I do have to make sure to get in communication with uh, all of our recruits, one's committed and one's not. That process, believe me, has started. I've talked to numerous people. Um, you know, every young kid is going to be a little bit, uh, have questions about change, and you just have to make sure that you explain to them what you're about, what you think you can get done for them, how you can help them achieve their goals, and how great of a place this can be. I do think I have experience at knowing that. Um, and you know what? You're going to miss on some, and you're going to hit on some. Uh, but we want to try to piece this thing together as well as we can, uh, get our coaches and myself to actively uh, be as aggressive as we can and, and make sure that uh, you know, we're, we're turning over every stone. But I, I do know it's just, it's just a matter of hard work. It's a matter of just uh, building those relationships as fast as we can and, uh, and, and making sure that uh, you know, we don't miss a beat. Hey, Jeff, right over here. Uh, Tyler Reaver with WHS 11. Uh, you mentioned that even though you were elsewhere, that your heart was always here. For those who couldn't understand unless they did grow up here and were from here, what is it about this city, this program to you that does keep pulling you back, those characteristics of traits that only you can know if you did grow up here? Well, luckily I've been fortunate to achieve a few things along the way, and it's really a product of the environment uh, that I was in and the people I was around. So when that happens, you're thankful for the things that got you there. And uh, this is where I live my life, and these are the people I've been around. Yes, I've been able to, to play on some NFL teams and coach in some different spots, uh, but really this is where my roots are. And, uh, you know, when you have a roots of a lot of family members and even extended family of people that you've met along the way, um, you know, you rely on them, uh, you want to please them, uh, and you want to do right by them. So I just think that, uh, you know, wherever you're at, you remember those special people and, you uh, if you ever get the opportunity to come back and uh, get with them again and, and try to do something uh, special in the game of football, that's going to make it even more fun. So I, I, that's why it's, you know, it, it just means a, a great deal. And that's why, you know, as, as a head coach and um, somebody who understands that, uh, you know, I'm going to do my part. Jeff, you... Uh... Uh, did play Syracuse this year. Uh, you know a little bit about the ACC. I know, obviously, you have the Big Ten. But what do you know about the ACC? Right now, it seems like Florida State and Clemson have carried the torch. Uh, obviously, you would like Louisville to be up there. Can you kind of explain how you will go about doing that and make an attempt to overtake particularly those two teams and anybody else? Well, that's a good question. I'm not an expert on the ACC, quite honestly, right at this point. Uh, you know, I've watched a, a few games uh, just as a fan and uh, through watching film study of teams we play. I think uh, across college football, there's a lot of really good football teams. The margin for uh, winning and losing is very small. Uh, every year is different. Uh, you have a new team. You have to figure things out. You have to prepare and get ready to go. I just think putting the best product on the field that can play explosive brand of football and offense uh, 
you know, make as many plays as we can, get the ball to our playmakers on defense, be as aggressive as we can, uh, eliminate big plays, but try to get after the quarterback and, and apply pressure to him, and then be solid on special teams. If you try to piece it all together and you work hard, you can find a way to win. And uh, every year, things are different. Without question, a few teams stepped up this year in the ACC. But, you know, next year, there needs to be some more teams step up uh, and, and, uh, and prove how good they can be. So I'm not ready to fully, you know, dissect exactly where we're at with all that. But uh, we look forward to all the new opponents uh, that I'll be playing, and uh, we'll study it very hard. Jeff? You mentioned earlier how difficult it was four years ago telling your family that you weren't coming back at that point. Can you tell us a little bit about what the discussions with your parents were this time after you found out this might be a possibility? <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably didn't answer their call the last couple of days. I knew what their response was going to be. Um, and, uh, and you know what? Our, my response and our response was the same. Uh, I just think that... Uh, you know, they care a great deal about this community and the people, and I understand that, and, and rightfully so. Uh, and you know what? In the end, they understood my decision. And uh, But you know what? They've always been Cardinal fans. Uh, they come to a lot of games, uh, of, of a lot of sports, um, and now they get a chance to, you know, have their son come back and, and, and try to do what he loves and, and help this football team win. So I just think, uh, you know, as I've stated before, um, you know, we care a great deal about this community and this program, and, uh, you know, it'll be a full family affair. You know, there's, there's a lot of family members that have coached with me, as you guys know. i got uh, my brother Greg, uh, who was our chief of staff and director of ops at, at Purdue with me, my brother Brian, who was our offense coordinator, quarterback coach, uh, obviously my father. I have a lot of extended uh, uncles uh, and, and people around me, and, and I get opinions all the time. <laughs> and it's almost always on the things I'm doing wrong. So I can take and construct his criticism very well. Uh, I listen to it all the time. Uh, my son and wife are pretty good at giving it to me as well. And my daughter now, she's been more outspoken. Um, so I'm able to handle that. So um, it's toughened my skin. It's thickened me up a little bit. And uh, I know that in the end it's about winning. So um, i got to figure it out. And we all got to figure it out. Uh, but uh, that's what drives you. Uh, and, uh, but, I, but I appreciate that. It's, it's great to, to have people that actually give you their real opinion you know there's some coaches you can be with they just kind of tell you what you want to hear that's not really uh valuable uh you want people to tell you you know uh, the reality of things uh and that's where uh it's really uh, humbling and it makes you you know really think things through before you do them Gary Graves, <clears throat> excuse me, from the Associated Press. You, you were talking about your influences with, you know, with Howard um, and such, and I guess the opinions that you've gotten from other people just now. But as a coach, offensively, where, has, where do you feel like your philosophy has grown over the years and all the programs that you've been with? Well, I think the goal is winning football games. But I do think the goal, always in my opinion, is, is scoring points, making the game exciting to watch, making it fun to play in making it something that your players want to be a part of. And that's why we've done what we've done. And at the same time, you got to take the talent on your team and try to mold that. So, you know what, there may be years, maybe um, the quarterback's a runner and you got a lot of good running backs. Um, you know, we've been around uh, the opposite where we've had, you know, guys that can throw the football. And, and I'm not complaining you know, because I think it's a lot of fun to throw the football and score points and, and do that. So I just think, uh, you know, I study film. You know, that's kind of what my hobby is, whether it's pro teams or college teams. We try to adjust things every year. Uh, we try to have a little fun with it and carry a few trick plays uh, here and there and make sure that, uh, you know, our players are enjoying that. But uh, it's nothing more than trying to be ahead of the curve, um, improve every year, and, and find ways to score points and win. Hey, Jeff, right here. Alexis Cooper oh, from the Courier Journal. You mentioned your son was the one who told you Monday morning about the job opening, but what, I guess, was that timeline like of, you know, talking to Louisville and then now, you know, taking the job? Well, those things are always uh, happening quick, uh, and you're never for sure exactly uh, what is exactly going to happen. You know, I have a job to do. I worked uh, for Purdue, and I, I'm out recruiting. It's a contact period. We're going to see players. Um, and eventually contact is made um, and you know eventually you talk about 
you know, the end result, is, it, is this going to be able to work? Um, you know, I, I had a great situation where I was at. Um, when I went in and talked to our athletic director, he basically said, you name the price in the years. And uh, I said, it's not about that. Um, so, and he knew that. Uh, I said, you know, this is just what I, I, I need to, to listen to and, and look at. Uh, so I'm thankful for whatever I have. Uh, I appreciate uh, the trust that uh, this administration has put in me. Uh, and I'm going to try to make the most of it. So just things happen fast, and you adjust along the way. You try to be as open and honest as you can and transparent, but it, it, you don't really know things fully uh, until the very end, and then when that happens, you, you, you try to do the right thing. Jeff, uh, you mentioned recruiting. Obviously, in recent years, it feels like people have wanted UofL to refocus some of its recruiting efforts on the city and the state of Kentucky. How important is it to you to reestablish and reconnect with the schools here and throughout the state to make sure top recruits and recruits see Louisville as a primary destination? Well, that question, that's always important to me. Um, I think uh, there's been a lot of great football teams here at the University of Louisville that were built around a lot of great in-state uh, players, players from this city. Um, I think, uh, you know, I have a relationship with a lot of the coaches throughout the state. Probably a lot of our coaches that are coming will as well. Uh, and we're going to make sure that, you know, we, we go into – every school if we can and make sure that uh, you know they get to know us what we're about uh, get to know their players and prospects and if they we feel that they can help the University of Louisville win we're going to make sure that happens and uh, we're going to give them that opportunity doesn't always uh, work where they decide to come here but I think that uh, there are a lot of coaches around here that trust the things I tell them uh, and believe in, in what we're all about and we will always make sure that uh, we provide those opportunities now with that now, there's national recruiting and there's relationships built across the country and we're going to make sure that you know, we try to get the best talent in here that wants to be a part of the University of Louisville, that wants to make a difference, that wants to do something special and have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, you guys do a great job of selling this town and, and this city and, and these facilities and what, what that's all about. So I just think that it's just, it, it takes hard work and it takes a commitment to uh, building those relationships and then uh, but I do think it's very important. We're going to make sure that uh, we prioritize that. Thanks. Okay, thanks. We've got about five minutes for questions for jo uh, uh, Josh and the, the two presidents, if anybody has, has to ask them any questions. Josh, uh, yeah, Pat. I yeah, am Pat. guessing this was a, probably a list of one, but did you get past the top person on your list at all in your search? Now, I wouldn't call it a list of one. You know, this is something that uh, you guys have heard the stories. You always have that short list and uh, make sure that you update that. And so obviously the way the season was going at the beginning of the year, I had spent a lot of time uh, working through what that list looked like. Now, I would tell you I don't think there was anybody as qualified. Uh, you know, when you're looking for a head coach, it's got to work both ways, right? They want to have to come or they want to come here and you have to want them. And so now I didn't know Jeff was interested. I assumed that he would be based on the history. Uh, and so from there, you know, you say, hey, who's the most qualified? Uh, who could we? Who are we able to get? Uh, who would be willing to look at this job? And then from that, you, you realize that, that Jeff rose to the top of that list pretty quickly. Josh, can you just you talked Monday about you know everything that was going on with the team? Can you guys give it? Can you give us an update how things are with the current guys? Are they on schedule to you know a bunch of guys play or maybe not play? And then also, as far as assistance goes, what? you and Jeff kind of talked about as far as will anybody stay from the, the previous staff? Yeah, we, we've, we have had very little of those conversations uh, as far as what the staff looks like. I mean, we just have, we haven't had time. Uh, look forward to sitting down and having that conversation, obviously. Uh, as far as the current team goes, uh, you know, I think the focus uh, is two things. It's that it's to have fun and try to win a football game on next Saturday on the 17th. And I would tell you Dion's doing an unbelievable job uh, and that's why I put him in this position. Uh.
you know, like I said, it's uh, uh, a large majority of those people in that building have themselves and their families to worry about. They don't know if they have jobs. They might be transitioning to other jobs. Uh, but I knew Dion was going to give his heart and soul for the next two weeks because that's what he's done for the last 10 months uh, to the guys in that locker room, and that's what he's doing. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're piecemealing it. We're duct-taping it together. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you who's going to call plays on the 17th. Uh, there's a lot of things I couldn't tell you, but I can tell you that they'll be ready to play on the 17th and, and, and look forward to that bowl game. All right. One what one more, one more thing that I need to make sure, I'm assuming everybody knows this, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. Uh, our volleyball team won their Sweet 16 match. And uh, so 4 o'clock on Saturday, I expect to see everybody at the Yum Center to cheer them on to get to the net to their second Final Four in two years. Thank you.